Hi, welcome back. This is the 556, one of the most popular calibers in the United States and probably the world. But this one bullet, like all other calibers, can have a wide spectrum of performance depending on what gun it's being shot out of. So I brought both an AR pistol and an AR rifle. Both of these guns shoot the exact same caliber, the 556, but they are very different. One of them has a 16 inch barrel and the other one has a 10.3 inch barrel and this one's a pistol, obviously. So we're gonna compare the two and see what the performance difference really is, and since the pistol braces have been added to the list of things being restricted for no logical reason, I thought we would cover the topic, and I brought out my AR pistol that I may or may not lose in a tragic boating accident right after this video. So this is the BCM AR rifle. I can't believe I've had this thing for almost 10 years now, and it's had literally zero problems. Uh, very accurate, very comfy, almost no recoil. And it also has a real stock, which is nice. You can see we got the ACOG on there. Shout out to OpticsPlanet.com for sending us the ACOG. We do have a discount code with Optics Planet, by the way. If you text one shot TV to 80907, they'll send you a coupon right there to your cell phone. And this is the Daniel Defense Mark 18 AR pistol. Also a very well-made gun, kind of expensive, but very nice. And of course it's got the pistol brace instead of a stock, which they're always changing the rules on. Can you shoulder it? Can you not shoulder it? I don't know. A little bit more recoil, uh, the shorter barrel and the shorter gas system, it just kind of hits a little harder, but still almost no recoil. And not quite as comfy with the pistol brace, which I was definitely not shouldering. Now, obviously at 10 yards away on a steel target, there doesn't appear to be much of a difference, but there actually is a performance gap between these different barrel lengths. So let's see what it is. Headshot. And looking at the steel, I can already see a difference between the two. So the shots from the Mark 18 did absolutely nothing to the steel, and the ones from the BCM did leave little dents in there. So it was the same ammo out of both guns. The only difference is the barrel length. This is a chronograph, which is a tool that measures bullet velocity. And when you're shooting rifle calibers like the 5.56, bullet velocity is everything. So we're going to try them both and see what the difference is between the 16-inch barrel and the 10.3-inch barrel. We'll start with the rifle and the ammo we're using is the Black Hills 77 grain OTM, which is probably my favorite 5.56 ammo. So let's see what the 16 inch barrel does. 26, 24, 26, 22 and 2664. By the way, those are 77 grain bullets, so they're not gonna be as fast as 55 grainers or something even smaller. And the AR pistol using the exact same ammo. This EOTech's not zeroed, so hopefully I don't shoot my chronograph. 2381, 2346, and 2322. So roughly a 300 feet per second difference between the two, which might not sound like a lot, but it definitely is. And one thing I will say, out of both guns, that ammo seems to be very consistent. So before we do our final test, I should probably mention the pros and cons of each of these. So the 5.56 in general is a much better home defense caliber than a lot of people think, and it doesn't over penetrate as bad as even some pistols do. Because it's so fast and lightweight, it tends to dump most of its energy into the first thing that it hits. Whereas like a nine millimeter, for instance, is much slower and heavier and will actually go through walls more than the 5.56 in some cases. Now, when it comes to the rifle versus the pistol, the rifle is gonna have every single advantage other than size. So we saw the bullet velocity difference out of the longer barrel, which would of course equal better bullet performance. It also has an actual butt stock, which is more comfortable than the pistol brace, but the pistol is gonna be shorter and more compact, which would be easier to use use and maneuver inside of a house. All right guys, for our ballistics test today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So we have two of these 17 pound ballistics gel gummy bears that were sent to us by Clear Ballistics. So of course, I wanna thank them for sending these out. I've never shot anything quite like this before. Now, unfortunately, these are not very thick, like from front to back. So as much as I would love to shoot it upright, I might have to lay them down, smack them around a little bit and then shoot it up his butthole, if you know what I mean. Because from the side, we actually have probably 16 inches of ballistics gel 
which is what we'll need to stop these bullets. So we'll send it up to Pooper and hopefully we can capture it. All right, let's try the pistol first. Once again, using the Black Hills 77 grain OTM and I put some water jugs behind our gummy bear just in case the bullet goes all the way through, so. And it went in right there towards the middle and it looks like only a small piece went all the way through and into that water jug because the large majority of that bullet did stop in the head of that gummy bear. It's obviously broke apart as it's supposed to do and the wound cavity you can see from the top is very impressive for a 5.56. The piece that hit the water jug did go in one side and out the other so I couldn't recover it but again I would say 90% of our bullet did stop in the head of that gummy bear. So the pistol was actually pretty impressive. Let's try the rifle and see if it does any better. Well, I was gonna use a fresh gummy bear for the rifle, but the pistol shot was kind of perfectly placed to where I could use this one again. So I'm gonna save the other one and we'll try the rifle once again using the exact same bullet. This should hit a little bit harder. I'm gonna aim towards the left. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, you can see on the slow-mo that the rifle definitely hit the gummy bear quite a bit harder than the pistol did, but I gotta be honest, the difference is not as dramatic as I was expecting. So our rifle shot went in right there to the left of our pistol shot, and of course, it's hard to see in there, uh, but the wound cavity is also quite a bit more impressive. You can see it right there. It's like the size of a baseball with a ton of bullet fragments in there, whereas the pistol shot has a longer, more drawn out wound cavity, and it also broke apart quite a bit more from the rifle as well. And just like with the pistol, we did have one piece of the bullet go all the way through and into our water jug, but this one we were actually able to capture. And here's the bullet fragment that went all the way through to the water jug. It's all lead, and it's actually a little bit bigger than I thought it would be, but it's still a pretty small piece, and I would say the majority of it is stuck in the gummy bear with the copper jacket. All right guys, there you have it. AR rifle versus AR pistol. The rifle definitely wins the bullet performance test, but the difference was not as dramatic as I was expecting. And the pistol being smaller and more compact obviously has its advantages as well. So what trade-offs you wanna make is kind of up to you. I love them both and I would have no problem using either one of these. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. I'd be glad to hear from you guys as always. If you like the video, please let me know down there as well and hit that like button for me guys i'd really appreciate it thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time